Welcome back to Autoimmune and You. I'm your host, Rachel. And I'm your host, Erica. Today, we are talking about um, consistency and setting intentions for your wellness journey and just kind of where we started and where we're at now and how you can do the same. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is something that Rachel and I talk about very often uh, when it comes to reaching your goals, especially with your health. Having a goal of, you know, not being in pain is obviously reasonable. Uh, but, you know, it's less likely that you'll be able to be persistent in reaching your health go- goals and being consistent with your diet and lifestyle changes if you're not connecting to a deeper intention. And so for me, Uh, When I think about an an intention, uh, I think about, you know, when I started my health journey, I knew that, you know, my life was so chaotic at the time and I was so stressed out and, you know, I wasn't eating well and I wasn't taking care of myself at all. And so when I got diagnosed, like I was just in this like position where I was like, I'm ready to like surrender and like see where this journey is going to take me. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping to evolve from it, like mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And uh, so that was kind of, you know, my intention was to just become the best version of myself, which is something I never really thought about on like a deeper level, right? Like I was like going to school, like I was in graduate Mm -hmm. school and like I got straight A's and I was like doing the best at my job. And it was like, those were all things, you know, in the external world. And like, I wasn't really connecting deeper to myself. And so Mm -hmm. part of my intention was to, yeah, see who I could evolve into and like the person that I was truly meant to be. And yeah. Yeah. I can connect to that as well because when I was basically bedridden for two weeks, um, when I was kind of like in between doctor appointments and just trying to figure out what was going on with me and my knees were flared to twice their size and I couldn't do much of anything even like walking or standing alone. And, um, I just did a lot of soul searching. Like some people from what I hear from clients and from people that I talk to is, you know, that if they're in a situation like that, they just kind of like sit there and, you know, they feel really sorry for themselves. And of course you're in pain and you're uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and it's horrible. I'm not going to minimize that at all, but I did a lot of soul searching. I took that time because I was like, okay, I have been working my butt off for, yeah. you know, since I was 16 yeah. years old, I had had mm-hmm. one, two, sometimes three jobs at a time mm-hmm. working my booty off. And I was like, okay, well I get a few weeks where I just get to do nothing. And I literally was sitting there like watching Netflix and like, what else are you going to do? You know, but yeah. then I started journaling so much. And that's when I really, really started getting into journaling. And one of the things that I did is just started figuring out what I, I kind of just felt like there was something else that I needed to be doing in life. I didn't know what it was. And it took me more like years more to figure it really out. Mm-hmm. But I was able to write down like, what is it that truly brings me joy? What do I want to yeah. do that I can't yeah. do right now with this like life altering flare up? I mm-hmm. felt like everything had been taken away from me at first, but I actually took that time to, like you're saying, set intentions and figure out what my why is and what I want to be doing in life. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to my husband uh, last night about, you know, the life that I was living before uh, I got diagnosed. And, you know, like I said, everything was go, go, go. Like everything was what society like expected Mm -hmm. of me. And so ever since I was little, I was always like, I want to help people or Mm -hmm. I want to help animals. (laughs) I was always (laughs) like that. So I was like, I knew I wanted to like work in the medical field and I, you know, doing, you know, something that was helping people and like benefiting society. And Mm -hmm. so you know, in the very beginning, like I wanted to be like a veterinarian. And then I, and then I transitioned to wanting to become a physician's assistant. And then ultimately it led me into marriage and family therapy. And it's interesting. It's like, I think I was trying to like, uh, uncover a lot of my own issues Mm -hmm. through all this like schooling that I was going through, because trust me, I, I had a lot of uh, mental things that I was dealing with, just uh, anxiety and depression and, uh, you know, just a lot of stuff from my past that I hadn't dealt with. But anyways, you know, it was just like, I thought 
you know, okay, this is what I need to be doing. Like I need to make a job that I need to be doing a job that makes, you know, X amount of money. I want to have the like, Ooh, I have my master's Mm -hmm. and which is funny because actually I wanted to get my PhD. So when I went for my undergrad, I was going to apply to um, the PhD program. And uh, I decided not to, because I was like, I kind of started school a little, not, I didn't start school later. I actually, it took me forever because I had to go to community college. And <laughs> anyways, it took me a while to get into about. my, yeah. So when I got into my uh, master's program, I was already 28 years old. And so I was like, if I'm in this PhD program, I'm going to be doing this for the next five, six years. Like, what if I want to have kids? Mm-hmm. Like what, what's going to happen in the next six years where I may be like, oh, I don't know if I'm like still committed to like finishing this. And so anyways, you know, when I think about that life of like everything I was doing in the external world, like I was not happy, like whatsoever. Like I felt like I was constantly just, you know, swimming with my head above water Mm -hmm. and like, and, and I thought like, oh no, Erica, like this is what you want. Mm -hmm. Like this is what you want. And I kept telling myself that, but I was so exhausted and in reality, well, in in retrospect now, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so, so glad I didn't become a marriage and family therapist. Not because, um, you know, it isn't a good job or anything. And it's not like you aren't helping people. It's just not fulfilling in the way that I get to do it now as a health coach. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can fully understand that. (laughs) I, I, I'm sitting here like nodding my head. People can't see this, but (laughs) the whole time, because I can relate to that so much. Like I went to school, I went to grad school, got my master's degree as well. And up until through getting my master's through my first few OT jobs, like my master's is in occupational therapy. So I had like, I was really good at my job by the time I like started working. And I just, I, while I still do um, see some private clients on the side, like pediatric clients, I I just wasn't like connecting with it anymore. And it's Mm -hmm. so crazy because I remember in grad school and this is like Mm -hmm. way before I got diagnosed too. Yeah. But in grad school, I remember looking at some of my close friends in my program being like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do this forever. Like I already had those Mm -hmm. thoughts, but then, you know, your mind kicks in and like society tells you, oh, well, this is what you went to school for. So you better do it. And now I'm at a point where I'm finally at peace with like, if I don't use my degree in the next five years, if I'm like completely done with OT by then, that's okay. Because I know that no matter what, I will be fulfilling my life's purpose, my soul's purpose on this earth. Like it's really, it can be so tricky to connect to that and kind of like let go of that control of that um, conditioning that society is like, you have to do the thing that you went to school for, or you have to go to school or you have to, you know, whatever it is that you're thinking that you have to do. And like Erica said, just really connecting to the fact that like, if that's not what you want to do, that's not what you want to do. Like, yeah. And it's simple as that sometimes, but we, we make it more complicated in our minds and it's really hard to get past what people are telling you, what family is influencing you with, um, and just kind of the thoughts that, like I said, you're conditioned to have. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And when I so when I started my graduate program, that was literally the first year that I got diagnosed. Okay. So at that point, I was still like, you know, I'm going to push forward, I'm going to finish this program, you know, I'm going to move on as, uh, you know, and become a marriage and family therapist. And that was going to be my life. But the thing is, at you know, when I got diagnosed, I immediately started with the diet and lifestyle changes, mm-hmm. right? So I was already getting interested in the health component Mm -hmm. and not just of like my physical health, but understanding that these diet and lifestyle changes that I were making were after, you know, after the first year of me doing this for myself, were drastically making an impact on my anxiety and depression. So I was like, okay, so I've drastically changed my food, right? Which was coming from the standard American diet. I was eating like crap. And I was like, okay, now that I'm like eating a lot better at that point when I was paleo, I wasn't eating fast food, wasn't eating dairy. Like I was cooking like 99% of my stuff at home, eating organic, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I was already starting to make that connection in my first year of graduate school. And I was already something intuitively inside me was like, okay, like there's something to this, 
Mm -hmm. And like, you know, and I already had my Instagram for a year and I was already sharing my journey. And I was like, this is, this is some, like I'm on to something here. And so, <laughs> so anyways, at the end of my first year of graduate school, uh, when I was about to start my training, I really had to evaluate whether this was something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. One, because I didn't know how my disease was going to pan out. I didn't know how, you know, I could have been disabled in the next few years, you know, or like maybe I couldn't write or like do my job properly. Mm -hmm. So I was also thinking about that. And so for me, I was like, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I want to like finish this and like, do I want to get myself more in debt when I was literally, my heart was being pulled in this direction of like, mm -hmm. I want to like see where this health thing takes me. And maybe this is this deeper calling that I've always had in my life, which is to help people. And so when I made that decision to leave my program, man, my ego was like, Erica, like, wow, like, you're not going to have this master's degree, like, you know, everything that, you know, people expect of you. And so I was like, it was really, really hard. But at the same time, like, like I said, my intuition was like, you need to follow your heart, mm -hmm. you need to continue in, in this direction. And here I am five years later, health coach, which is crazy. Ooh, and, and, so and, and the thing I know, and it's like, you know, I, I have, you know, my clients now and I'm so fulfilled by the work that I get to do. I would have never been able to do that as a marriage and family therapist mm -hmm. ever. Yeah. You just don't. And that's the thing is, um, what Erica is saying is that, you know, she's, she wouldn't get that fulfillment and that's not on anyone else, but like we, everyone has their own path. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that we're talking about with this is like, not only with your health journey, but just life in general. And for each of us, we chose to, like we've said in the past, turn that pain into purpose. Like when we get diagnosed, when we feel like life is over, but actually turning that into something positive and something that we both have grown through and actually flourished into. Yeah. And when I was bedridden, like I was saying, I, I say bedridden, but like, I feel like that sounds so, I don't know, bad, but I really mm -hmm. was like, I couldn't. I couldn't really, I was there too. Yep. Like, I was bedridden. I hate sure. saying that, but it's exactly what it was. Um, 23 years old and bedridden. And, and I, like I said, I was doing a lot of journaling and I noticed that things that I couldn't do in that moment or in that time period that I really, really wanted to do was be out in nature and, mm -hmm. um, be working out and be mm -hmm. cooking and be mm -hmm. helping people. And those are like yeah. the top things that just kept coming up every single day when I was journaling. And look at what I'm doing now. <laughs> I'm getting out as, in nature as much as possible. I'm helping people mm -hmm. every single day. I mean, yeah. thousands of people, which is yeah. so incredible that we have this impact and, you know, get to basically like work out and like focus on a healthier lifestyle as part of my mm -hmm. job now. And it's crazy yep. to think that I had this like vision and had no idea where to start or what to do with it when I was sitting in bed for two weeks and like my life had been ripped out from under me, but yeah. it helped me to create this new path for myself. And while there was a lot of kind of bumps in the road on the path and a lot of like, maybe like wrong turn, maybe not wrong turns, but like turns that mm -hmm. didn't really get me where I wanted to go. Yeah. It all got me to where I am now. And so I'm thankful for every single step of it, including the fact that I was even, you know, that I even had to stay in bed for two weeks because it gave me that time to reflect. It really, um, it sounds, I, people always like roll their eyes at me. I feel like when I say it, but this is like the <laughs> biggest blessing that I was ever given is yeah. like to be forced to take a step back from what I was doing because what I was doing was not working. And the yeah. funny part is you mentioned that you were like noticing that you already felt so much better um, compared to what you were eating before. And I felt the same way. I, um, before I was even diagnosed, started noticing little things in my, in my gut health, which I didn't know was gut health at the time. I was just mm -hmm. like, Oh yeah. When I drink milk. I fart a lot. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> drinking milk, like little things yeah. like that, that I would make those connections. But then once mm -hmm. I was diagnosed, I was kind of like four forced to encouraged to do my own research. And I was like, Oh my gosh, no wonder I've, I've had these issues. And I was able to really connect everything. And mm -hmm. so for me, it was like, the beginning of it was kind of out of necessity that I started researching. Cause I was just like, I want to know what the heck is going on with my body. But then after yeah. that, that intention really, um, kind of built itself. It what I feel like for me, 
besides that initial journaling that I was just talking about, it was never like, I'm going to sit down and do this. It was just like, I really want to help people. And I really just Mm -hmm. feel better and feel healthier and inspire people to do the same. Yeah. It wasn't, I don't think I ever like fully sat down and was like, what is my intention? I think it just kind of like came to me. No. And I, and I totally feel you on that too, because like, you know, I don't think I ever like clearly set the intention, but my actions in my everyday life mm-hmm. were intentional. Mm-hmm. And so that's how, you know, you lead up to this position where we're both at right now because we were intentional. We were like, you know, introspective about ourselves and like, you know, ready to learn, uh, ready to challenge ourselves. Not everyone that gets diagnosed with the disease has to become a health coach, (laughs) has to do (laughs) something epic with their life. Um, But you do have to um, just, you know, set a strong intention for yourself, whether it's, you know, just being a more mindful person, you know, being less stressed, uh, being more self-aware, like, you know, Mm -hmm. treating your body with respect, like, all those things are also like equally, you know, important for yourself. So it doesn't have to be like, you know, my intention is to like be a health coach Mm -hmm. or like uh, change the world. (laughs) So by no means, you know, does anyone have to do that when you get diagnosed? But some people, you know, like Rachel and I, we have that calling and Mm -hmm. I can see it in both of us. And like, it wasn't like a forced thing where we're like, well, we need to turn this into something because like, (laughs) this is what I need to do. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. It was like we both felt like drawn for whatever reason to like, hey, like I want to help people. And like some people, just because you don't feel that desire to go, you know, like I said, become a health coach or, you know, be in this position of helping other people doesn't mean that you haven't done the self growth. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you're less of a person. (laughs) So just just be clear. But some people (laughs) have that drive. And like, like I said, since being very young, I've always had this passion for helping people. And so it kind of the direction that I've been in my whole life, you know, whether I, you know, flip flopped with like my career choices, uh, you know, it's all the in, deeper intention was to always help people and to, you know, bring back some goodness <laughs> into the world. And so, you know, I think that's what drove me, you know, this whole time. And as far as like me just really quickly going back into, uh, you know, my first year of graduate school, when I was still dealing with anxiety and depression, I had anxiety and depression like my whole life. Mm-hmm. And so I never thought I could get rid of anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. And what's funny was, like I said, I'm in, you know, this marriage and family program and like we're learning about the brain and like all these different like mental disorders and all this stuff. And as I'm going through the program and I'm eating better, my anxiety and depression was going away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is happening here? Like I'm in my first year of my diagnosis. I should be the most stressed out. I should be the most depressed. And for some reason, it was like driving me into a better place. And so because I was starting to make the connection of like, okay, food is drastically affecting my mental health. So I was like, where is this going to lead me? Like if I have clients come in that are eating McDonald's five times a week, you know, and they're wondering why they have anxiety and depression and their nutrition is totally off balance, their lifestyle is not conducive to a happy or a healthy mental state. Mm -hmm. And I can't do that because that's, I can't talk to them about that because it's not really in my scope of practice. And so that was also another reason Mm -hmm. why I decided to leave the program because I knew, like I said, that I was really on to something that I wanted to share this information. I was already doing that on Instagram and I was like, you know what? Like this doesn't feel right. And so anyways, yeah, that's kind of, that's how it kind of happened for me. Yeah. Wow. That's such a good point of not aligning with, yeah, the scope of practice with marriage Mm -hmm. and family therapy. Like you really couldn't, if someone's coming in with all these issues and you deep down know that things could be changed, but really, I mean, it's not, it's not your place as that type of therapist. So that's really interesting that you saw that you felt that and you kind of went towards that shift in the other direction towards that nutrition and health, which is amazing. Yeah, I know. And it's like, you know, I could have been like, you know, maybe you should see like a dietitian or something like that. But then I was like, I I just wanted to like give something 
give someone something deeper, something mm-hmm. richer that can really bring value to their life mm-hmm. and to, you know, do something beyond just recommending them go see a dietitian, you know, like yeah. someone that had like personal experience and like wisdom and like the thing with being a therapist is like, you know, you're so like you're you're taught to be objective. Mm-hmm. You're taught to like not bring yourself into the session. And so for me, like I was already getting so passionate about the things that I was learning that I think it would have killed me to be sitting in the office and like hearing people talk about, you know, (laughs) their eating habits and their lifestyle and, you know, and not wanting to go like, ah, just stop eating these crappy foods. (laughs) So anyways, I'm glad, I'm glad I made that decision and uh, it's totally, it's totally changed my life. Yeah, I can. I mean, everything we can always relate to each other. So I feel like I'm constantly repeating. I can relate to that. I can relate to that, but I really can. (laughs) Um, I was kind of like, yeah, you know, I really wanted, I really miss working out. Right. Like that was something that I had always done ever since I stopped dancing in high school. And like, I just really liked working out and I couldn't do that. I couldn't cook, which I really enjoyed as well. And I was like, okay, where do I go from here? And I was like, oh, I'm going to like find some sort of job in wellness and fitness. And so I got a job at Orange Theory Fitness and I was mm-hmm. at their front desk. And on at that point, I was like, okay, well, I can't really be on my feet for super long because my knees were still having a yeah. lot of issues. And I was like, okay, well, I can like sit at a front desk and I can like at least immerse myself into this like world because mm-hmm. I never had before in that way. And my whole goal at the time was to become an instructor there. I was like, I'm going to get my personal training certification so I can be an instructor here. And that's what I thought my calling was. I thought that I was Mm -hmm. supposed to do that. And I started studying for a personal training certification. Um, This was now four years ago, almost. And I just like wasn't really in it. And I kept putting it on the back burner. And I was just like, eh, I don't know. Eventually I got an OT job again and was like, okay, maybe this is what I need to be doing. And so I just kind Mm -hmm. of like, I quit orange theory. I started working at this pediatric clinic and I did love it. And I worked there for three, over three years. But again, I recently, I quit my day job, um, four months ago now, because I was like, this just, it's not as fulfilling as the thing that I'm doing on the side, which is coaching people and like being there for people. And I think that I want to, I want to make it clear, like Erica said, like helping people does not have to be everyone's intention or everyone's, um, goal in life or everyone's calling. And that's perfectly fine. But at the, at the root of it, you need to be helping yourself because Erica and I would not be able to help our clients if we weren't (laughs) ourselves first. And we didn't build that consistency for ourselves in our own routines and do the research for ourselves. And so what we do as coaches to help people and to fulfill our passion and our purpose is to kind of guide them to do the same for themselves. And, you know, we both started in like very different places from where we are now, like drastically, like I was in the same place, like you were talking about eating the standard American diet before I was diagnosed, I was eating, you know, fast food multiple times a week. I grew up in the Midwest. Like that's just like what you do. You eat fast Mm -hmm. food, you go get pizza, you, you know, get, you get, I don't know, take out Chinese food and yeah, you drink all the, all the things. And yeah. (laughs) So I think that shifting from that to where we are now, I want everyone to realize that doesn't happen overnight. It's not like a flip switched and we're just like, yep, I'm all better. I am totally (laughs) committed. Like we both, I mean, we both have times still to this day. Now we Mm -hmm. might make like healthier indulgent choices, but we still make indulgent choices and we still make choices that our bodies don't necessarily love, but they're Mm -hmm. just like, we have learned how to tailor it to where we're at now. And it's, we've both come such a far away, but there's always more to go is the thing. And so setting that intention, but knowing that there's not really quote unquote, a destination because you're always going to be learning. Your body is always changing. Your circumstances are always changing. Life is changing. And I know that I kind of touched on this in a past episode, but I think it's just such an important um, point to touch on again, because it's people, you don't work with a health coach and then, you know, you're fixed a month later, two months later, a year later, you know? Oh no, you're barely, we're barely, (laughs) barely helping them set the the foundation. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so setting that intention, but knowing that the intention is not short term, the intention is long term and also the intention intention can change as you go. Yep. 
And so when I, uh, when I think back to that first year of like being diagnosed, I also, you know, made the decision with my, with my husband that I wasn't going to work and that I was going to, on top of like doing my graduate program that I was also going to focus a hundred percent on my health. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, luckily I had the privilege of, you know, a supportive person that was like, you focus on your health and not many people get that opportunity where they get to, you know, a hundred percent focus on their health in their healing process. Mm -hmm. And so that's another thing, like, you know, not having to work, you know, do the nine to five job. I've done like little side stuff over the years, but to go into the nine to five job and like, you know, have my energy wasted and coming home tired and like Mm. not preparing my meals and, you know, not having time to do all the research. Like we talk about, like this requires time and effort. Mm. (laughs) Like it really does require time and effort. And so I feel very, uh, you know, lucky that, like I said, I was in this place where I was able to do all this work to get me to this point. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's how I like developed a very strong intention and, you know, was able to reach a lot of my goals for myself because I did have the time and you know, I talk to a lot of clients and, you know, they have kids and they're working full time Mm -hmm. and, you know, they're dealing with like relationship issues and like, you know, uh, the million things that could possibly, you know, happen in someone's life to hold them back from actually reaching their health goals. But at the same time, anything is possible, no matter what Mm -hmm. is going on in your life. If you set that strong intention of I'm doing this because I want to be more mindful. I want to be um, more aware of like, you know, how foods make me feel like Mm -hmm. whatever that intention, you know, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to an intention because it is just something that you intuitively know that you need to work on. Yeah, I can give you a really good example. Um, You brought up a really good point about like not everyone has that um, ability to kind of take a step back from everything else and focus on healing, which is so incredible that you're able to do that. And there are people out there that can do that, which is amazing. But for some people, you know, you can't. So I am a, an example of that. I had, I was out of work for about two months mm-hmm. and I was completely living off of credit cards in mm-hmm. LA where it's mm-hmm. really oh. expensive Ooh. to live. Ooh. And I had a really expensive yeah. apartment at the time. Yeah. And so I was quite frankly living off of credit cards for two full months, which is a lot of expenses. Yeah. And I'm mm-hmm. still paying some of that off yeah. to this day. Yeah. And, you know, it was a really hard time mentally like that in addition to the physical stuff that I was going to and the other mental and emotional stuff, that's another mental stressor, yeah. right? Like yeah. money. Mm-hmm. And, but then you still have to have that intention. And because I had that strong intention of wanting to tune into my body, of wanting to turn this around so I could help other people, yeah. I was able to push through, even though I was out of work for two months. And then after that, I was searching for a job for so long, couldn't find mm-hmm. one, finally yeah. found one and was working. Um, I wasn't working a whole lot at the time because I still just couldn't tolerate it. Um mm-hmm. I was getting like exhausted so easily and my body Mm -hmm. just like couldn't handle it. But I was working like anywhere from 20 to 25 hours a week. And, you know, I was still working on my own healing throughout. And because Mm -hmm. I had that strong intention and that strong want to, um, to feel fulfilled and to just feel better in general in my own body, because I felt so disconnected when I was first diagnosed and during my first flare up, it was the most surreal, like awful experience to be completely honest, because like you really feel like your identity is gone and whoever you were is no longer. And that's, first of all, that's just not true. If you really Mm want to go back to that person that you were before, if you really were a healthy, happy person before you can't get back to that. But if you were not a happy, healthy person before, and you're realizing that now, um, you, you can reframe that you can completely rewrite your narrative. You have the power to do that. And we're here to help you with that, um, as coaches, but, I also wanted to um, touch on the fact that like people a lot of times will be like, okay, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to focus on my healing, even if they're super busy or if they aren't, you know, Mm -hmm. but I wanted to touch on the fact that like, it doesn't take a week. It doesn't take a month. Like it takes so much 
time and effort and consistency, even if you feel like you don't have any extra time, it will take yeah. extra time. Oh, and you yep. have to be ready for that because I think that too many times people see Erica or I and they see our daily routines and they see, you know, what we're doing to heal every day mm -hmm. and they assume that like this is what they should start with and that's not yeah, necessarily no. the case you have to start where you're at and then go from there and as coaches that's what we are here to help you do and that's mm -hmm. why it's important to work with someone like us because you definitely can have an understanding of where to start right yeah but then it's like where do you go from there once you took that first step amazing but where do you go from there how do you kind of like level up and then get to that point and then level up again and then get to that point yeah and also keeping that consistency because accountability is what's going to set everything apart from just kind of like going along and doing the things. Yeah. And yeah, I agree with all that. And I do want to just quickly go back to something you were talking about, uh, uh, about the financial part. So, you know, when my husband and I decided that I wasn't going to work and we were going to focus on my health, like he also set a strong intention for himself and also for our relationship and the progression of our relationship. And we both came to an understanding that we were going to sacrifice so much over the last, you know, three years that I wasn't, you know, working consistently. And so we sacrificed a lot. I mean, we didn't go do a lot of crazy things because we were like really tight with our money. Uh, you know, we did go into credit card debt, I believe, like the first couple years of uh, me not working because it went from both of us working two full-time jobs, mm -hmm. living a lifestyle on two full-time jobs to living off of one income. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of like adjustment and growth that we had to also go through because it was like, we both really prioritized my health. And like, even though things were stressful and like, you know, I couldn't buy the things that I wanted, but I was like, so my intention was so strong mm -hmm. to like come out of this on the other end that I was like, okay, all my money is going to go to our organic fruits and vegetables. All my money is going to go to supplements. All my money is going to go to, you know, whatever healing modalities that I've used over the last, mm -hmm. you know, five years. And so you really have to be like, you know, in that mindset, like things will work itself out. Like it's going to be messy and to begin with, mm -hmm. but if you really want it, you yes. have to keep going. And like Rachel was saying, like, you know, she was trying to focus on her health. So she, you know, left her job and then she got in debt, but she was still like, okay, I'm still going for this. I'm still going for this. And like, it was messy, but like you can recalibrate and like, you know, sometimes it's, it's uncomfortable. And like, you know, I'm not saying everyone go quit your jobs, people. Yeah. <laughs> um, but almost like it really does. Like when I look at people in positions like Rachel and I, we've had, you know, we've just remained consistent and like we've kept persevering through, you know, very challenging times. And, but we understood like, this is what you got to do. Like, it's not like a simple task to do. Like your health is not a simple task. Like it requires all your effort and it requires a lot of time. It requires a lot of money, but you know, and it's not cheap, but you know, it's totally, it's totally worth it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely worth it because when we look back, do, yes, I still have credit card debt from that time in my life and I'm still mm -hmm. paying it off. And yeah, it kind of sucks. But at the same time, I know that in my entire life, I am in such a better place than I had ever been or could have ever gotten without what I went through. And so yeah. it's kind of a good example of like grow. They say like grow through what you, what go, you go through. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah, I, love that. I, I always, I always tell people that it's so yeah, true though. It really is. And I wouldn't have been able to do that. I wouldn't have realized. I mean, looking back, I was diagnosed almost exactly four years ago and my life would have panned out completely differently. Than oh what my it is gosh. Now. I couldn't oh even imagine. My and I don't want to know what it no. would have looked like. Mm -hmm. Honestly, mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for where I'm at. And like Erica just said, you don't have to sit there and be like, okay, like they were able to shell out a bunch of money. If I'm being honest, I have not shelled out a lot of money. I have never gone to a naturopath. I have never gone to a functional medicine doctor. I've never done half of the things that I mm -hmm. want to do and 
would love yeah. to do because I can't afford it. And I'm not ashamed to admit that like, yeah, we all have our own path. And if you can afford a naturopath or a functional medicine, doctor, mm-hmm. acupuncture, you know, all of the different modalities, please absolutely do that for yourself and find what works for you. But if you can't, please know that is not the only option. Yeah. And there are other ways that you can heal. And eventually maybe you can work up to that. Maybe you can save up and like start, you know, going to one eventually, but that's, Mm. you know, that's kind of where I'm at. And like I said, it's a journey. I'm still in the middle of that and trying to figure out what works for myself without, you know, having the means of finding different, um, modalities and different types of doctors. Yeah. And yeah, I completely agree. Like, you know, the thing is you don't want to like put yourself in a position where you're like stressed about money now Mm -hmm. because you're like doing too much. So, you know, it it all depends what's reasonable for your life and everyone's lives and finances look completely different. And so, and you know, sometimes we think we don't have the money, but if we really adjust a lot of Mm -hmm. things in our lives, if we stop buying all the Starbucks, if we stop buying the, you know, going out to eat, (laughs) if we stop going out for drinks with our friends, if you know, all this stuff, you know, a lot of the time, this is actually a good point to bring up is that, you know, my husband and I, when, when that first year of me, you know, quitting my job and us, still trying to live off of this budget that Mm -hmm. was like as if it was both of us working that's that wasn't good and so over you know these five years we've adjusted it's like I'm not bringing in that much money right now whatsoever and he's still you know he makes you know a little bit more than what he was making obviously five years ago But the biggest key is that we've learned to budget Mm -hmm. and prioritize things like our health. And so there was a lot of things that we were spending money on that we don't spend money on now. And now we have a safety net for, for instance, like I do see a naturopathic doctor because uh, I had mentioned it in a previous episode, like I got, I got a parasite um, when I went uh, on, on my honeymoon Mm -hmm. and, uh, when I was in Indonesia and like getting a parasite is not something I could have fixed on my Mm -hmm. own. There's no way. Like we were literally in a financial spot of like having to ask his parents if they could help us out because the expenses were high. And at that time we hadn't like really calibrated our budget in the best way. And so we were asking his parents, like, hey, can you help us out, like, for the first couple of visits or, like, the first couple of tests that I needed? And so after, you know, a year now of working with her, like, we've completely adjusted our budget to, like, be prepared for my supplements and the things that I need. But it's, like, that was a priority to me, you know? Mm -hmm. I was, like, if I can't go anywhere for two years because – I need to work with this doctor that's going to help me heal my gut and get rid of this parasite that was totally destroying my life. Mm-hmm. If I don't have anything brand new for the next couple of years, I'm totally okay with that because like my health is totally – my health is everything. That's all that we had. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it all depends on – yeah, it, it depends on a lot of things. It depends on your finances. It depends on like what you're willing to sacrifice mm-hmm. in your life. Like – like I said, it can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be expensive. It depends on your current state. Like, do you need that much? You know, Mm -hmm. like you don't need to go see an acupuncturist and a this and a that and this. But if you feel that it's really relative to your healing, Mm -hmm. like, especially when it comes to like massage therapy, like I know because my mom's a massage therapist, that massages are so key for me because of the fact like I have, I hold so much tension in my neck and shoulders. And so, you know, you don't have to look at what someone else is doing and go like, oh, I need to go do it because they're doing it. You need to do Mm -hmm. what you feel feels right for you. Mm -hmm. And if that is on the expensive side and and, but you feel like, okay, I really need this. And you notice that it's actually helping you like good, like good on you because it's everyone's, you know, own journey, but don't bend over backwards trying to achieve all these things when it's not realistic for your life. Yeah. Making sure coming back to intention, making yeah. sure like it doesn't have to be expensive things that you go after. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. for some people, so like I personally, I drink celery juice every morning and like, mm-hmm. 
that's not, you know, a crazy expensive thing. It's not yeah. does, super time consuming or anything like that, but I know it's insane differences in my body and mm-hmm. some people, you know, search after that and they jump into that and that's fine. But for other people that might seem expensive to get organic celery every week. And it might seem expensive mm-hmm. to have a juicer or time consuming to juice every morning. And mm-hmm. so it's all about the intention behind that. If you yeah. do see, you know, Erica, for instance, going to see an acupuncturist and you decide I should go see an acupuncturist. What mm-hmm. is your intention behind that? Is it because yeah. you see her doing it or is it because mm-hmm. you truly feel called to do it and you've done your research and you know that it might, it could benefit you when yeah. you're going into that office visit, are you going into it saying, this is going to help me. I'm going to feel better. Or are you going into it saying, well, it helped Erica. So hopefully it'll help me. And yeah. again, having that intention behind every single part of your routine that you're doing, whether it's cost, whether it's costly, whether it's free, like mm-hmm. whatever part it mm-hmm. is, um, making sure that you have your intention set behind what you're doing. And another thing that is a little bit unrelated, you were talking about um, possibly, you know, like readjusting finances and, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe not getting Starbucks every day or maybe yeah. not going out for drinks with friends. I yeah. just want to point out the fact that like most people that get Starbucks aren't getting just a black coffee. And so cutting out things like Starbucks and getting drinks with friends, you're also still benefiting your health, not only saving money, like Mm -hmm. you're cutting out so much extra sugar and processed things and alcohol probably and fried foods. If you go to a bar Mm -hmm. to meet a friend, like think about the other benefits of readjusting that part of your life, whatever it is. And I'm not just saying, I'm not saying everyone has to cut out Starbucks and yeah alcohol, but like, you know, maybe, you know, one time a week instead of five times a week or something like that, those little adjustments are going to help. And as you make those little adjustments to your lifestyle, to everything that you're doing in your routine, it's going Mm -hmm. to get easier. And that's where you build the consistency little by little day by day, small changes at a time is how you build that consistency. And that's where you grow. And that's where you learn to get from where you started, wherever you are now to where Mm -hmm. you want to be. And then beyond that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is that, the biggest things that promote healing are actually free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, becoming mindful, you know, meditating, um, breathing exercises. Mm-hmm. Breathing uh, is huge. Right? Uh, exercising, you know, you don't need to have a gym pass to exercise. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you don't need to go to a spa to relax. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of this too is free. And so let me – I do want to uh, go back to this really quick, is that when I did start my uh, health journey, I was very, you know, willing to throw my money at absolutely everything because I was so desperate to feel better Mm -hmm. that if I read about a supplement that would reduce inflammation, I was like, oh, let me take it, you know, (laughs) right? Because a lot of people, when they start out on this, you come from doing nothing, Mm -hmm. almost nothing for your health to, oh my God, let me do everything for my health. And so that's also, you know, something that you learn along the way and you don't, you're not equipped with how to handle a disease. (laughs) Okay. No. No one's equipped. No one knows how to like, you know, exactly what they should be doing. And, you know, in five years, okay, I'm going to still need that. Like that's kind of our mentality, Mm -hmm. but we forget as like we progress and we become more in tune with our body. We, we learn to weed out the things that are unnecessary. So if I look at my diet and the things that I'm eating and my supplements that I'm taking, they're actually very, very minimal things. Like I take turmeric, like a probiotic, vitamin D, B12 and iron because I, I, I always have low, low iron, but I'm not over here like taking zinc and magnesium and this and mm-hmm. that and like a bazil- like a bazillion things that, you know, I could get from, you know, my diet. And so this is a process of everyone, you know, connecting into their body, becoming mm-hmm. in tune with what they need and not overloading themselves with unnecessary things. Because like I said, All of that is still coming from the external world. Mm -hmm. The biggest part of this whole healing is always going to be internal. And so the the farther that I get into this healing journey, the less things that I attach to and the more I connect 
to my deeper self. And I realized that everything I need is within me. And it's not something I need to go spend a hundred dollars at a grocery store for. Yeah. Everything comes back to that mindset and it doesn't have to be a mindset costs nothing. Mindset is the foundation of everything and it costs nothing to work on that mindset. And, yep. um, coming back to that intention, coming back to your why, and just remembering that every single person's journey is different. And just because my journey looks different from Erica's, Erica's looks different than yours, mm-hmm. yours looks different than your other friend. Yep. That's okay. And it's all about we're Yes, we are a community. We're all doing this together. We're all here to support each other, but that doesn't mean that everything is a one size fits all because it is quite the opposite. No. <laughs> Uh, Some people look to me, you know, when I start working with them to, you know, give them their personal intention. And I tell them, I'm like, I can't give you your intention, you know, like, this is something that you have to connect deep within yourself. And really, when I, you know, start having that conversation with them, like, they intuitively know what that deeper intention is. And so I can't say like, hey, your intention for this next three months working with me is going to be this, you know, and there is no right or wrong answer. You know, everyone has their own motive and thing uh, that keeps them grounded to reaching uh, their health goals. And so, like I said, for me, it was like the deeper intention was one, becoming like the best version of myself because I was so sick of the way that I was living before. And honestly, the Two days, let me tell you this, two days before I got diagnosed, I remember I was walking, so I live in a complex, and I was walking through our complex on my way to my house, and I was so depressed that I literally didn't want to live, and I literally told God, you know, and I'm not even like the most religious person, Uh, I do believe like in, you know, a higher power or energy or whatever you want to call it, but I don't adhere to like a specific religion. But anyways, I'm like walking through and I'm like, God, like if this is my life, I don't want to live. And I literally did not want to live. And I told my husband, like, I don't want to live. And he was just, you know, and it was so hard for him to hear that. And I was like, that was me calling out to my own self, looking for a reason or some greater purpose in my life. Because like I said, I was doing everything basically for everyone else. And I was totally neglecting like my spirit, my soul, you know? And so two days later I get diagnosed and that diagnosis changed my whole freaking life. And like, I no longer like live with anxiety. I don't live with depression. Like I feel like, a you know, because I have this greater purpose and I'm connected to something bigger. Like, and I realize like my decisions as a human affect the entire world. And it's not just, you know, about me. And so mm-hmm. that's also was my intention was like, you know, I'm not just healing for myself. I'm healing because I want to like better my relationship with my husband. I want to be a better friend. I want to be a better daughter. I want to be a better human. Mm -hmm. And that was my intention. And so that's what I stuck to from the very, very beginning. And that's what drives me every single day to reach my goals because I never, ever want to be back to that person that I was, you know, five years ago. Wow. First of all, I feel for you so much during that story. I'm just sitting here like sending you out so much love. And for the person that you've become from growing through that, incredible. I couldn't imagine, like I said before, I couldn't imagine where my life would be um, if I hadn't have been diagnosed. And I also don't ever want to be back to the person that I was before I was diagnosed. But I I can completely connect to those thoughts and those feelings and just not... I mean, you really feel like where, what, when you get to a certain point, you're like, who am I? What am I doing? Yeah. I don't understand. What am I supposed to be? You know, go, where am I supposed to be going from here? Mm-hmm. And to come out of it on the other side and just turn around and go, wow. Yeah. But also to still have such love and respect for that person that we were before. Yeah. Um, before yeah. diagnosis, yeah. And also yep. before becoming who we are now, right yep. after diagnosis. I yep. mean, it's incredible to look back. And I think that every single person listening should do that. Whether you were mm-hmm. newly diagnosed, whether you've been diagnosed for years, just take yeah. a quick look back and look at how far you've come in days, weeks, months, years, yep. whatever it is, because 
I promise you, you've come so far. Maybe do some journaling about it. You know, I'm a huge advocate for journaling. Mm -hmm. Something that I really like to do is just write down like bullet point, because to me, I don't like feeling kind of like daunted by journaling. Mm -hmm. I like to really just come at it like, okay, I'm just going to write whatever comes to mind. And so Mm -hmm. for me, bullet points tend to be like my go-to because I don't Mm -hmm. feel like writing full sentences a lot of times. And so I just bullet point, like I did this actually pretty recently. Like I bullet pointed where I was a year ago and what my life looks like now and what areas I'm super proud of and what areas I grew from and learned from. And, you know, it's, it's a beautiful transformation that we're all going through collectively together, especially during these times. And Mm -hmm. whether you're forced into it or not, don't dwell on that. Mm -hmm. Well, on the, and not dwell, focus on the fact that you're able to get through it. Yeah. Well, on the fact that you, you were kind of pushed into this place of you know, learning more about yourself, but look at it as an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Take, this is also like the biggest thing that I could tell someone, like take comfort in knowing where you're at today because you have the possibility to be somewhere different another day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like you don't have to, you know, that's, that's the beauty of life. Like we evolve literally every single day. And so wherever you're at right now, you know, set that intention and every day is a new day to begin again and to push Mm -hmm. yourself further and further towards uh, whatever goals that you've set in place for your life. Yeah, absolutely. And one, one of my favorite quotes ever that I feel like is perfect to close this out, Where wherever you are right now, whatever type of day you've had, whatever type of week you've had, one of my favorite quotes is you've already made it through 100% of your worst days ever. Yep. So true. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. We are super happy that you're here with us every week. We will be releasing episodes every week now from this point on. Every Wednesday, we'll be in your house, we'll be in your car. Hopefully, you know, you'll be listening to us while you're cleaning or maybe uh, when you're, you know, taking an Epsom salt bath. But we're just so appreciative of you guys and we're getting so much love and support and we can't wait to share more with you. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to remind you guys that we are not medical professionals, nor do we give medical advice. So please do not stop taking any medications without consulting your doctor. However, if you'd like to learn more about holistic ways to manage your autoimmune symptoms, we each offer private coaching services and would love to help you. Stay tuned for our next episode. In the meantime, let's connect on Instagram. We are at autoimmune and you, and we would love to hear from you. And if you want to follow each of our personal accounts, we would love that too. You can find our Instagram handles and our websites in the show notes. We'll chat next time. And always remember, you are more powerful than you think.